With the July release of Fusion 360, we announced the public preview of automated modeling. This new tool provides a groundbreaking method of exploring shape potentials across a design space without any need for loads, constraints, or other performance information. While the engine that drives automated modeling is a sibling of generative design, the approach we took was to make this as simple as possible to use and to provide access to all subscribers of Fusion 360. Let's take a look at how the tool works and a few best practices to keep you running smoothly. Automated modeling is used to create new geometry in either a part or assembly context. The geometry generated is meant to be a source of inspiration for further development. This might mean using the shape created as a jumping off point for your own design, as a starting shape for generative design, or even as an end use design with edits, simulation, and validation to ensure performance. The designs created by automated modeling are editable and allow for downstream changes like any other solid model. As of this initial release, there are three outcome types and two interface regions. That makes for a total of six alternative outcomes. You'll find automated modeling as its own icon in the toolbar of the design workspace. The tool itself is a single dialog box with just a few selections that need to be made. The first selection is for faces to connect. These are the faces that will be joined together by the created geometry. Notice that these are faces and not bodies like in generative design. Also note that the host bodies of the faces selected are treated as obstacles to the automated back end of the system. This is because automated modeling creates new interfaces entirely and does not rely on preserved geometry like generative design. Another thing to note is that the entire face selected will have geometry grown from it. If you need to keep areas clear on a face, a split face operation will likely be the right solution. The interface, regardless of the type, will grow from the face selected in a direction normal to that face. The second selection in the dialog box is for bodies to avoid. These are meant to be areas where the geometry cannot go. They may be things like fasteners, tool clearances, motion clearances, or even used as an aesthetic tool to drive the design in new directions. If you're using fasteners as obstacles, be sure and de-feature any threads as they may create unnecessary complications. Next, we specify whether we want to create a new body or a new component. The new body option keeps everything tucked nicely into the component we're currently working in, whereas the new component option creates a new internal component in the assembly to put the automated modeling result in. The parametric recipe, which includes the T-spline, is the same for either type. It's just whether or not the chosen result lives in its own component or as part of the component already activated. Lastly, we hit the Generate Shapes button. This button passes the setup information off to the cloud for processing. The results come back in real time, usually about two minutes. You can see the results start to populate in the dialog box almost immediately. The on-screen preview shows you the design as it's being calculated, and the dialog shows a general percentage of completion for each of the design alternatives. Once the alternatives have completed their processing, you can click each one in the dialog box to see the preview of what that final shape will look like. There's a checkbox in the dialog for opacity that changes the bodies to avoid visibility in case you need to examine an internal detail that may be hidden by the obstacles. As of this initial release, we're including six potential design alternatives. These six alternatives are made up of three general result shapes and two interface types. The two interface types are organic and crisp. Organic interfaces use a wrapped T-spline to cover the faces to connect. The crisp interface options offset the faces to connect into new prismatic solids. Notice that the alternative one and alternative four are generally the same basic shape, but their interface regions are different with one being organic and four being crisp. Because of the way these interface regions are shaped, there may be slight differences in the overall shape of the results, but their general design should be quite similar. This same paradigm applies to 2 and 5, and 3 and 6, respectively. Once you have a result that you're satisfied with, 
you simply select that result and hit the OK button. The model is then brought back down from the cloud and either placed in the current component or placed in the larger assembly, depending on your operation selection. The parametric recipe for the shape is automatically added to the timeline, including the T-spline shape, which can be edited using the normal T-spline tools like Smooth or Cylindrify. If you determine that you want to explore a different one of the alternatives after selecting your choice result, you simply edit the automated modeling command in the timeline. This will bring the dialog box back up, and then you can change to a different outcome. If a change is made earlier in the timeline to one of the faces to connect, or bodies to avoid, the automated modeling results will need to be regenerated to account for those changes. Also, if revisiting an older design after two weeks, the automated modeling alternatives will need to be regenerated as well. Sharing F3D files has a similar effect, with automated modeling commands needing to be regenerated to obtain the alternatives. In all three of these scenarios, any result that you have already promoted out will be intact, but the solved alternatives will not be available without regenerating. Here are a few best practices and helpful hints to maximize your results. Symmetry. Symmetry in automated modeling happens automatically. There's no need to specify a symmetry plane or even add it to the T-spline after things have been generated. The caveat to this is that the design space must be truly symmetric to start with. If there's any aspect of the design that isn't symmetric, the result will also lack symmetry. Beware of designs with high aspect ratios and thin bodies. The generative design and automated modeling engines on the cloud use a volumetric approach to their creation of geometry. This means that the design space is treated as lots of cubes stacked together. If part of the design space is very thin, like say the side of a sheet metal part, and it's used as a face to connect or obstacle, there is the potential for failure because the geometry may be too thin. Thinking about the cubes again, if that geometry is narrower than one of the cubes, then the stacked cubes can't produce that shape with good fidelity. Even if the geometry is a few cubes thick, the curved organic nature of the shapes mean that there may still be issues. As a best practice, avoid thin or high aspect ratio geometric inputs. Splitting faces. Sometimes faces need to be split in order to better suit the design. This might be for creative reasons, or it might be that a face extends outside the scope of a design. Remember, the faces to connect have geometry created that covers their entire area. For example, here we see a pair of glasses with the temple area removed. We would like to create a new temple section by using the screw on the main frame and some connecting areas on the earpiece. Notice how the screw has a single face representing the threaded area. If we select this entire face, the resulting geometry is less than ideal and actually kind of problematic from an assembly perspective. Since we don't want geometry to live in the area between the screw and the main lens frame in that sort of clearance zone, we'll need to split this face to create three new surfaces. One at the top, where we expect to connect on the top side, one in the middle, where we do not want any connection, and one at the bottom, where we again expect to connect. By splitting the cylindrical face of the fastener into multiple sections, we're able to connect them without creating that problematic geometry that exists without the split. Automated modeling, included with all subscriptions to Fusion 360, provides designers with new shape creation tools that don't follow normal conventions. Explore your design space in just minutes and get inspired to create new forms and push the limits of your design. This new tool and geometry creation is just the first step in a new paradigm of automated shape development and design space exploration. All this and more in Autodesk Fusion 360.